This is One on One. There she is, you all recognize her, Janice Huff, Chief Meteorologist, NBC4 New York. How you doing? I'm great, Steve, how are you? Great, you it's, love your job. I do love my job. I have the best job in the world. You do? No, 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 <laughs> hold on. I have the best job. Okay, we have the best jobs. When did you know that this is what you wanted to do for a living? Well, I knew that I wanted to study weather and meteorology very early on. I always say to people, I probably came out of the womb just knowing that I was going to do this someday. I was born this way. Um, probably when I was like five or six, as a little child growing up in South Carolina, mm. watching the clouds change and the storms roll up and the sky turn black. And I always sort of was, yeah, at that, that time is. in the fifth grade. You knew. <laughs> Even before then, I knew. And it was probably in the fifth grade that I decided that I really wanted to study meteorology. I, was looking through the encyclopedia one day, World Book Encyclopedia, sitting on the shelf, had the M book, found meteorology, and that's when I knew. New York, when? New York. Uh, when did you get here? By, got, the way, by the way, you can tell we're in New York at 66 and Broadway. You might hear yeah. some of the activity going on <laughs> behind us. Um, when did you get here to New York City? I came here in January of 1995. <sighs> so this January will be 21 years that wow. I've been here. Wow. It's amazing. I'm shocked. Describe your team. I, I told you before we got on the air, even though our family loves PBS, public television, always number one, but when we wake up in the morning, it is your station. We have an amazing team all across the board. Every show that we do from the mornings to midday to the evenings. Uh, Chuck Scarborough, of course, been there for, you know, 40 something years. Um, Chuck and I are the two longest running at, right now, at WNBC. Gabe Pressman, of course, has yes. been there a long time, but back and forth. We have um, longevity, we have uh, professionalism, we are a family. I mean, I know it seems, you know, hokey to say that and people, do you really get along? Is everybody really nice? Well, you know what? Everybody on our team's really nice. It's real. It, re it is real, it really is. And there's a lot of giving back going on. We're about to show a clip from an organization called Wednesday's Child. Wednesday's Child. Mm -hmm. Talk about that because it's such an important thing to you and people need to know about it. Wednesday's Child is a weekly segment, had been a weekly segment. Uh, now it's more of a quarterly segment that we do uh, with foster children in New York City. And we're trying to find homes for them. This was brought to us in 1999 by the, Fed, uh, by the Freddie Mac Foundation. They were sponsoring right. uh, the Wednesday's Child segment in Washington, D.C. at our sister station, WRC. They came here because they wanted to go across the country and do this. They didn't want to just focus on one city. They knew there was wow. a need in every city across the country. So they got 10 sites in the beginning. We ended up with five, and we're still doing it uh, 17 and a half years later. We're still trying to find homes for kids. Wednesday's Child, yeah. let's check it out. He's just brought so much joy to us. And um, you know, he had a really rough start to his life. And to know that we've made a difference, it's just overwhelming. Put that in perspective for us. Is that David Hatcher? David Hatcher, who is our managing editor at WNBC, is, uh, you know, he was one of our permanent adoptive parents. He saw this child and wanted to be a part of it. It's so special when it hits home. And I say home being the NBC family. To see this happen, a success story of something that we try to do every single week is to find a permanent home for these wonderful children who, for whatever reason, don't have one. For you, with your profile, your high profile visibility in this market, the number one market in the country, what responsibility do you feel, obviously, to make a difference like this? I think it's... Because... And where does that come from? Sorry for interrupting. Where does it come from? Um, I don't have children, but I do love children. I, I remember and I know what it's like to grow up in a family and have people that love you and support you. What it means to have that, it's everything. I would not be here today if it weren't for every single person in my family, in my school, in my church, everybody. Not to have that kind of support, um, it's, it makes me sad when I see children that don't have that and I know that they can and I know that there are people out there that can give it to them. So it's, we're just a part of that whole process, because it's a big process to help them find that. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's, 
it's more rewarding than anything that I could possibly ever do is to help someone else. Shifting gears. Yes. Your fascination with weather. Mm -hmm. If I were to ask you what the most significant part of the weather picture is today, would it be global warming? I would have to say yes. Because? Because it is affecting every single person on the planet, not just us, and not only the things that we do to either help add to it or curb it. Other countries, what they do affects everybody else. It's a domino effect. It affects everyone. And it changes, it will change and has changed lives on multiple levels. Um, and it's happening. We see it, we record it, we know it. We need to do something. And we are doing things. Enough. I mean, uh, it's never enough, I don't think. I don't know that it ever will be enough, but it's a lot. And um, so many countries are on board and everybody's you know, agreed, for the most part, that for the, this, most, part. For the most part, that um, this is something we need to do. I, I mean, as a person, I can't imagine why you wouldn't want a, a cleaner world, uh, water, clean water to drink, clean air to breathe, you know, a nice climate, uh, not extremes, and not to be in danger all the time of something happening, water rising, and why not? Why wouldn't you want to live in that world? Sandy, impact you. It did not am impact me directly. No, 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 as no. When you were covering, oh, you were talking. Oh, absolutely. How so? Even before it happened, it impacted me. When we were watching the forecasts, we call them forecast models, the, the computer projections of what is to come. When we were looking at that information a week before Sandy uh, got to us, the projections from one particular model, as you probably heard, the European, you hear about that, there's several different ones, was projecting that exact turn. And... We watched trends, so we watched it day by day, each day as it got closer, because we didn't want to alarm people or get alarmed ourselves, but this will probably change when it gets a little closer to us, and it never did. And that was frightening. It was absolutely frightening to know that that was about to happen, and then still not know exactly what was about to happen yeah. to you. Frightening. New York State Broadcasters Association inducted you into the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. Huge. What do you feel like? Um, it's the most important um, moment in terms of my television career. Uh, I felt beyond honored to be thought of in that way by my peers. And I realized I'm a little old. I've been around for a while. And when you Your get experience to, is what you are. <laughs> well, when you get to that level, I guess, then people start to recognize you for um, your achievements and your accomplishments and the person that you are and what you're doing and what you've done. And, it's wonderful. I want to ask you this, not just as a broadcaster, mm -hmm. but as someone who, all of us, who try to do what we do and love what we do, but you get knocked down, rejected, you try to stay in the game. Your secret to not just staying in the game, but being at the top of your game is? Is just doing what you got to do. I, I, I don't ever really think about it too much other than I have a job to do. And I want to do the best job that I can every single day that I'm there. And I love what I do. And I think a lot of it has to do with things that I have no control over, really. Um, just being in that right place at the right time and being, just being who I am and, and uh, just thankful and that everybody's happy to have me still. Yeah, how about your incredibly positive attitude? Uh, that too. Thanks. By the way, when can people check you out? I'm on the air at 5, 6, 11. Monday through Friday <laughs> on WNBC, NBC4. You work a lot, and when you're there, you make a difference, and you make everyone feel safe and comfortable, and we thank you for the work you do every day Thanks. in this New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, tri-state <laughs> market. And um, I have a feeling every morning when I wake up, I know what's going to be on in the morning. It's your station. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Summit Medical Group, St. Peter's University, Suez, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, the New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor, the Russell Berry Foundation, 
and by the Give Something Back Foundation. Promotional support provided by NJ.com. Small news, big news, true Jersey. And by the New Jersey Chamber of Commerce, the statewide voice of business in New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.